Don't you look peachy keen. <laughs> wow, I've never interviewed an orange before. Well, you better hurry up before you get impeached. <laughs> I'm Cheryl Lazar. Welcome to the Partners Project. I'm right now with Dane Bo. You might not know him or recognize him, but you know him as the annoying orange. The apple. What? Knife. Huh? Ooh. That's right. This is the man behind it all. In less than a year, they built up a subscriber base of over 1.3 million people. Uh. 1.5 million on Facebook, and right now we are coming to you from the garage. The garage, yes. The garage. This is where all the magic happens. Yes, yes. <laughs> Whenever we shoot uh, leprechaun, uh, grapefruit, kiwi, grandpa lemon, it all happens here. So uh, tell people how you got started, how this all developed. Well, I've actually been doing web video for a really long time. I started like five years ago, just been doing, you know, short and viral style videos, uh, uploading them to YouTube. I, I've, ha I've had this thing with uh, talking food. I don't know what it is, but I love doing videos with talking food. How was your childhood? <laughs> <laughs> Very warped. <No. laughs> your mom was like, eat this, please. <laughs> but it, it, it kind of started out with like, I, I, I really love to make videos with kind of fantastical elements talking food, talking whatever, taking inanimate objects and bringing them to life. Hey, Apple. Hey, Apple. Apple. Hey. Hey, Apple. What? What? What is it? Suddenly, I did this video back in uh, October 2009 called The Annoying Orange. I uploaded it not even intending it for it to be a series. It was just going to be another one-off viral style video. But people just love the character and it just took off. I got emails right after I released it saying, hey, you need to make more, make more videos with this character because we love him. Well, what do you think it is about this character that is drawing people in and making them want more? It's very relatable because everybody kind of knows that character. Everyone knows someone that's kind of like that. That's, you know, kind of fun, but at the same time doesn't listen to you at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and on another end, people like to watch other people getting annoyed. I don't know why that is, but you look at a ton of uh, classic cartoon characters like Bugs Bunny, Woody Woodpecker, things like that. It's a proven comedy shtick. Uh -huh. And uh, it's just, it's, a, it's another angle with that. I mean, they, those characters might not have been as annoying as Annoying Orange. You brought it to the extreme. Exactly. Yes. At what point did you realize that this was really blowing up? Christmas last year, 2009. I uploaded the, the Christmas episode, and up until this, up until that point, the first three episodes had done really well. Yeah. I mean, they'd each hit over a million hits, but it had taken them a couple weeks. But then I uploaded the Christmas episode, and within two days, it hit a million hits, and I was like, wow. Because I, had, you know, personally, you know, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time, mm -hmm. but I had never seen velocity like that. And as soon as that happened, I knew. There was something big here. So the Annoying Orange has become such a movement. Like, what is really behind this phenomenon? Why has it gotten so big? He's a character. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned over this last year is that characters rule. Mm -hmm. You know, you can follow, you know, people, whatever, but there's something about having a character that you follow every week and seeing what kind of crazy antics they get in and how much fun that can be. Uh, you, you know, it's, 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 it's not unlike having, you know, your favorite character on TV, whether it be, you know, Don Draper on Mad Men. Yeah. You know, you want to follow that character because you want to see what's going to happen with him. But I think at its core, I think that's what it is. It's, it's, it's a character and people love characters. And do you think it's also the fact that maybe YouTube is being more legitimized and it's like it's riding yes. this new wave mm -hmm. more than ever before? Mm -hmm. Much more than before, absolutely. It's finally starting to see some legitimate, you know, uh, feedback from professionals and things like that. Like, look at Freddie Wong. I mean, he has, like, Kevin Pollock and, you know, all kinds of, uh, the guy that plays Spartacus, I cannot, Andy Retfield. Yeah. Um, things like that, you know, where you're seeing old media meet new media, it's finally starting to get some legitimacy that way. And that's why this is a new form of entertainment for everyone out there, for the kids, for the teens. Yes. It's like they aren't watching TV. they rather just go and watch your show. And I'm, I'm not going to argue. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, what is the secret behind all of this? Is there a secret behind being a YouTube success? Um, hard work, absolutely. Yeah. I think one of the things that people 
kind of don't understand is that how much work goes into it. They think, oh, you're just making a talking orange and that's that's so easy. I used to work on Kit My Ride before I started doing yes. the whole web video yeah. thing. And there I worked, you know, 14 hours a day doing PA work, things like that. It, it was a great experience, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, but it was something wasn't something that I loved doing. And you know, to spend 14 hours a day doing that, that's that's a lot of time. And now, I would say I work just as much, if not more, a day doing just these orange videos. But the difference is, I love it. You know, I, I actually love waking up and you know, that's I look forward to like sitting in front of my computer all day and animating a talking orange. It's ridiculous, I know, but yeah. um, I'm happy. I'm very, I'm very gracious for the opportunity. Everybody that you see on YouTube, they've been doing it for a long time, mm -hmm. you know. Keep working hard and keep practicing your craft. Watch your favorite programs, see what works on your favorite programs and kind of emulate that. You don't need to copy it, but just see what works and incorporate that into your own work. What inspires you? Cheesy special effects. I've always loved movies with, with special effects, uh, particularly cheesy special effects. I love the old school horror movies like The Blob, Frankenstein, all that stuff. Yeah. Like it's, they're just a lot of fun to watch now. I mean, back then, of course, yeah, they were actually scary, but you watch them now, they're, they're kind of They're cheesy. hokey, they're yeah, a bit exactly. hokey. Um, and I like to have that kind of element in my video. What does the future of the Annoying Orange hold? Like, where do you see this all going? As of right now, we're doing a lot of really exciting things, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working on a pilot, okay. which is written by Tom Shepard. He, he wrote uh, Pinky in the Brain, Barnyard, a bunch of really well-established like kids' programs, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's where I think everything needs to be going. You, you look at traditional media, mm -hmm. they don't have a large online presence. A lot of them don't. Yeah. I think, you know, if The Orange ever did become a TV show, it would have a huge, huge step up against the competition because it already has a, such a huge fan base. And you can take your online viewers, push them towards a TV show. You can take your TV show, push them towards online, and it's just you're generating so much traffic. It's really unique what's going on in YouTube in terms of the collaboration and the community, not just mm -hmm. of the people watching, but of the creators. Mm -hmm. You look at all of the big YouTubers and they're all in each other's videos. And when you do that, you only help each other. You're driving traffic you know, from your video to their video to their channel to your channel. I think it's absolutely imperative that you do stuff like that. It's, it's, it's important and it's smart. And it's like, it's the culture around this mm -hmm. whole thing. Yeah, it's the culture of helping each other. And all, all of us YouTubers, we kind of know each other and want to help each other because we want to see each other succeed. Thank you so much, Dean, for sharing your story and giving us a behind the scenes look at how this all goes down. And of course, thanks for making me into a character. Absolutely. It's definitely been a highlight of my career thus far. All right. <laughs> and thanks to all of you for watching another episode of The Partners Project. We'll be back next week for more, so stay tuned. See you later, hot potato. <laughs> Thanks for watching the very first episode of The Partners Project. I cannot be more excited because every Thursday we will be back with a new episode profiling your favorite YouTube stars. So definitely subscribe to us right here. Thanks so much to Dane Bo again for being our first victim. And you can subscribe to his channel, The Annoying Orange, right here. And for outtakes from this episode, go right here. We will also be back on Tuesday to bring you Partners Pro Tips. Dane will share his entire process and how he made me into a peach. And of course, next Thursday, we will be back with I, Justine. So leave your questions for her in the comments below. And let us know what you think of this entire show. We want to hear from you. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye. If I had one wish for you, I'd wish for you to